This video is definitely going to be a personal one. I would say it's rather for myself in the future to be able to reflect on what the meaning of life is to me now. So I'm kind of going to go on a little bit of a ramble. If you're interested to see what my thoughts on the meaning of life are, then feel free to listen, but it might not be the most entertaining video as such. So my current hypothesis on the meaning of life is that the meaning of life is to create meaning. And that sounds a little bit contradictory. The meaning is to create meaning. And what I mean by that is to find things that are meaningful to you. So whether that is a goal that you want to achieve in the future, whether that is something to do with relationships or jobs or life or anything, then that is something that is meaningful to you personally. And a big separation to make here is never to do what someone else says is meaningful. So generally there are kind of expectations in life that are seen as meaningful, whether that's making money or, you know, having religion or all these kind of things that people have. Or there are a lot of these things that people say are the set ways to find meaning in life. And I think that these are good on the condition that you find them yourself. If you choose that making money is meaningful to you personally, and you really know that this comes from your own thought, then I think if you pursue that, it would be meaningful. The other thing I want to talk about is the Greek concept of eudaimonia. So a lot of the times people kind of say the meaning of their life is to be happy. And that is quite an interesting phrase, because where do you get happiness from? Well, of course, there are temporary pleasures which grant you happiness for a certain amount of time. But that fades very quickly. And the more you do them too, the less happiness you get from them. So what we're going to talk about when I say happiness is we're going to talk about the Greek idea of eudaimonia, which is the word that they used, which kind of is an all-encompassing idea of human flourishing. So that's physically, mentally, all these ideas. And when you achieve eudaimonia, that means that you're at peace with your life, and you will be happy for a very, very long period of time. And that is something that can be sustained. So to achieve eudaimonia, what do we do? Well, firstly, we need to have a goal that we're working towards. And this goal has to be meaningful to you. So if you're someone who is very interested in art or music, then working towards becoming a better artist is going to give you a sense of eudaimonia. It's obviously not going to be a full complete sense, because there's going to be other aspects in your life that you need to address, whether that's relationships, family, all these kind of things. And there are a lot of people that don't have the luxury of being able to make these choice. Sometimes the meaning of life is just to survive. I think in the modern world, though, that, that um, the default survival instinct that gives us meaning has slipped away. So it's on us personally, every person personally, to find their own meaning. And that is a very, very scary thing. You know, you'll be told, oh, get a good, get a good paying job and you'll be happy. If you go into a job every day that you are not passionate about and that has no meaning to you, then your life is going to be miserable. I mean, I'm going to say that and I'm going to say that to myself. That's what I think right now. So if my future self is watching this video and is in a job that he hates, then quit. You should quit your job, seriously. Take a risk. It doesn't matter if you need it, because you need to feel meaning in life more. <sighs> so to create meaning, you really have to dig deep. And a lot of the times mentors will tell you, you know, write down where you want to be in five years, or write down where you want to be in 15 years. And this can come across as a very kind of vague point, because you're always going to kind of write down what they think you should. So let's say you're studying music at university, which is what I have done. And my tutor has told me, write down where you want to be in 15 years. And I felt the pressure to say, you know, I want to be, I want to have a job in an orchestra, because I was studying classical music. And I still feel a lot of allure to that position, but I don't think it really fits my own meaning to the full extent. So if I was writing down where I want to be in 15 years, it's going to be a much broader sense. I want to be doing something creative that can give me a living. And that can be in any sense. It can be in visual arts, whether that's painting, which I'm very interested in and I'm quite good at. Whether that's philosophy, I consider that an art because it's the art of the human brain. Uh, I'm probably going to cringe at this when I listen to it, because this was kind of on the fly. Anyway, 
whether that's music, whether that's music production or music performance. I think the idea of performing in an orchestra, although it would be a fun full-time job, I don't think it would be a meaningful full-time job. And that if I did have a full-time position in an orchestra, that wouldn't be my dream or the thing that gave me eudaimonia. That would be almost a, a pleasurable experience. I get to go to rehearsals, play great music from other great minds. But what I want to be is I want to be a great mind. I want to be one of the people that other people follow. I want to be an artist that people get inspiration from. I want to be a writer that people find meaning from. Or I want to be a musician who creates new genres, who pushes the limits, who creates new sounds, who creates a new experience. I don't want to follow. I want to create. And that is a very, very hard thing for me to tell myself to do because there are a lot of steps involved involved to getting there. So I did, did kind of say that this video was for myself, but since I am uploading this, I'm going to try and apply this to you watching and give some examples. So let's say you're good at something. Let's say your best subject in high school is science or stats or maths. If you're very good at maths, that doesn't inherently mean that you find meaning from it. If in, in another example, let's say that you're studying maths, you're not very good at it, but you love looking into it. You love finding new things. You love looking at studies or like all the kind of the current mathematical work that's going on in the world. You watch YouTube about it. Then I think that that's something you should pursue. I think that you could look, there's a lot of information online and I think you become a lot smarter than everyone else who's studying the same things as you. And then suddenly, let's say you decide to become a mathematician, which is a very weird job because it basically only involves teaching unless you're kind of working at a university and conducting research, which is very possible. I think if that's something you're interested in, the research into new ideas and maths and how they can be applied, then, you know, power to you. I, I haven't met anyone like that, but there are definitely people out there who do it. So for this hypothetical, a person loves researching maths, was never amazing at it, but they were very passionate. I don't think you need to be talented to be good at something. Or to, you don't need to be talented to find meaning in something. And that passion, that meaning, is what is going to motivate you more than anything else. So, yeah. Uh, is there anything else that I want to address in this video? My meaning of life is to create meaning. Oh, the other thing that I want to talk about is the fact that there is also meaning in your existence and your relationships with other people. So, I want to be a great friend. I want to be a good partner when I'm in a relationship and I want to be a great father. I want to be able to be a wise man and that sounds very cringe to say but I'm taking steps to get towards that point. I think more than anything else, more than my creative endeavors right now, I'm taking steps to become a wise man. And you know as a 20 year old, year old saying this, it's a lot of people would laugh at me but I'm quite confident to stand here and say it. And I've been doing a lot of reading into um, psychological concepts and philosophy, especially philosophy. I love philosophy. I do a lot of reading and I watch a lot of content around philosophy. And I think that um, my ideas are probably quite skewed in one direction right now towards um, in politi politics. In uh, that sense, I'm probably skewed towards capitalism because of the things that I've read. And I'm trying to balance that out. And understand the other side because there are definitely very smart people who have very good arguments to why you know a more socialist society would be better for, hum for humanity I think the problem is right now is that I'm very very convinced in the idea of <sighs> opportunities being available to everyone to do something that isn't expected and I think in a socialist society that goes too far there are going to be jobs that disappear that are not deemed necessary. But I also think that socialism is very important because there are people that without a social network will fall. And I would love to know that if I fell and if I had a moment in my life where I lost all meaning, I had no purpose, I became homeless, which I'm quite privileged to probably not go into that position due to my parents being very responsible people. But I know that if I was in that position, I would like to be able to live. So I think having kind of health networks, um, social security, 
all these kind of things, is very important to an extent. I don't think people should be given enough to be happy. I think people should be enough given enough to have the ability to once again find meaning and work towards it. And then they'll probably find happiness in that. Or they definitely will. I can tell you guys that, or myself that, once you work towards something that's meaningful toward to you, you will find happiness in it. And that's because you have found a sense of eudaimonia, or a fraction of it. Thanks for watching. This was a bit of a ramble. Um, if anyone watched, I know that I will watch this. So thanks me for watching. It's been a bit of a weird video. I love that uh, I'm talking about kind of having meaning and then my room's completely scuffed, dude. I mean, I just moved and like there's boxes everywhere. My bed's not made. It's funny because I was, <laughs> I was thinking about recording this video and I saw all my, uh, my, some of my clothes thrown on my bed and I'm like, better clean this up, dude. What a contradiction. So yeah, take steps towards finding meaning. Thanks for watching.